For this video, I'll walk you through a powerful notification component solution which can also be used as snack bar. I'll share with you some amazing CSS positioning, animation and transition techniques that will allow you with so little and be able to position this notification anywhere on the edge of the view. Show me your support by liking or commenting on this video. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on anything. Now let's jump into it. As you can see here, I have six buttons which will help me demo you this notification. Each triggers the notification to appear on different parts of the view. On the CSS side, I have the staff for the body to center everything on this nice gradient background. As always, I box size border box everything. I have a simple style here for this buttons container where I flex wrap to make the button break into a new line with 10 pixels gap and width of 300. For the buttons, basic styling. Check my button video for some cool button style and animation, link below. I make the button a third of the width and subtract some pixel to take into consideration the gap. If I give a container a background, you can see there is still some room on the right. I can play with this to make the buttons of different size and break into a new line differently. Or I can find a perfect cut to make it fit in rows of three. For the notification component, I'll paste the simple HTML of div of notification container class which will be the container where I'll place all notifications for much easier positioning and in between notification relationship control. You will understand what I mean in a little. Inside I have an actual notification element which is a div of class notification message with some simple lore and text. And I added a close button as well so we are able to dismiss a notification if we want as well. Now let's style this. I'll start by giving the container my debug background color so we can track it and positioning it absolute which by default will position it relative to the body. This is so we can place the container inside any other container if we want to. Top and left of zero to place it top left corner and I'll continue by setting some variable that can be used by elements inside this container. First, for the notification size, which will be 300 pixels, I'll use it to set the container width. The position absolute here is very important, actually. Remember, the only reason I want the container is for the position reasons. So for the notification message, I'll give it a dark background, white text, some padding, round this corner by 3 pixels, and display flex it. Notice that once I set the position absolute, the container collapses, which is good and the reason for that is we never set the height and by setting the message position to absolute, we remove it from the content flow which was giving the container its size. We can reset this background now. I actually want to offset this message 25 pixels from top and left side and I will set the width same as container. Now I'll create a variable for the gap since I'll be using it for some calculations down the line. I'll justify content with space between and set gap so we can give this close button some room from the text. I'll also style it with 25 by 25 white text, no background and border as well. And of course, point the cursor. What I want to happen is for this message to be off the view and animate into view from the left. For that, I'll translate it on X axis negative of its size but there is still something showing so I'll set the left property to zero. To animate this I'll create keyframe animation I'll call slide from left where at 100% I'll set translate x to the gap size. I will now use the animation with duration of 300 milliseconds, ease easing and set forwards so the animation stays at the end state. I want for a easier control of animation so I'll create variable for animation duration and easing and replace them accordingly. This will allow me to change things in a single place and even control it from JavaScript side if I want to. It needs something else so what I can do is set opacity of 0 to start and update the keyframes to bring it to 100% as it slides in. I think this is way much better and feels more natural. Now let's jump into JavaScript and build a control on top of this. I'll create a constructor function which takes an optional position which the default is top left. Inside I'll create a div container and give it a, and give it a class of notification container just like we have it on HTML right now. I'll also set an optional parent container argument which by default will be the document body. And this is so we specify where we want to place the notification in the DOM and I'll use it to append this notification inside. 
I'll expose a show method, which takes a message to show. Now, I'll query this triggers containers and grab the children, destructing based on their position. And I'll grab the top left button, attach a click event. Let me first instantiate this notification and I'll just use the defaults here. Then I'll call show inside a click handler and with a simple message saying where it should display. Before we can try this, I'll need a way to create a message element. So I'll create a function for that, that takes a message. And inside I'll create a div with the same class we set in HTML. And the email HTML will be a span tag with the message and our beloved close button. Then we just return the box. Inside our show method, I'll create our notification element and we will insert it in our notification container using the insert adjacent element method, which allows us to prepend the element. Now, when I click our top left button, we see our notification, super cool, right? So we have a tiny issue here, which is if I continue to click the button, the notification pile up on top of each other and it just hang out there. So we need a way to make them go away. For that, I'll set a duration, which the default will be five seconds. Then I'll create a timer variable because I'll use the set timeout function and inside I'll simply remove the notification. Now, if I click the button, then wait five seconds, the notification will disappear. This set timeout and timer will allow us to do some super cool stuff, which I'll show you in a bit. Now we need to fix the stack issue. And what I want is as the next notification comes in, the current notification moves down smoothly to make way for the new notification, which may sound complex, but it's super simple. And this is all due to the how we structured HTML inside the container, which allow us to use one element to find the next. And let me show you. I'll first create two variables, one for the gap, similar to the one we create in CSS and another for the stack gap, which is the gap in between the notification. I could also grab this from the variable, which we set in CSS, but I'll leave that to you if you want to do so, which is actually an ideal thing to do here. Now inside the show method, I'll create a space variable and this will contain the space needed for the next notification to fit in. And for this, it will be the offset height plus the offset and stack gap. Then I'll grab the next sibling, which is the notification, which is at the top. And this is because the new notification will always be at the top. So we want the next one to move the top gap plus the notification size and stack gap. But what if we have more notifications after that one? To solve that, I'll use a while loop and check while there is a notification after and update the next notification top with space value. Then I need to add the next notification size plus the stack gap because it's no longer on top. The only gap after the first one is in between. Then we get the sibling next element and update our sib variable here. Now, when I try this, it just shifts. Ain't this super cool? The movement is not smooth, so to fix that, I'll add a transition to, to the top property. And if we try this again, it is much smoother and disappears nicely as well. Now we have a different issue, actually a few as far as the overall experience. So imagine if the same message is requested to show many times one after the other. This will keep on stacking. We will actually address that issue in a bit also. What I want is to keep track of the notification being shown and if the same message comes again while it's being displayed, instead of creating a new notification element, I'll just add five more seconds to the current one time left, which means if the same message is requested to show 10 times, it will just remain visible longer instead of updating the DOM with a new message element. But for that, I'll create a notification object for tracking. Now at the end of show method, I'll use the message to set the object where I'll store the timer. Very important because we will need that to reset the timer and make it stay longer and the notification element. At the top, I'll check if the message is already in the object and return calling a function I'll create next, passing the message and the duration. Now, what this function does is clear the current timer that is used to hide the notification. Then I'll set a new timer to remove the notification with the additional five seconds, which is our duration now. Pretty much we are canceling hiding the element and set it to hide in the next five seconds instead. 
now if i keep clicking here you will notice that the notification is staying longer and as soon as i stop five seconds later it just goes away because i repeated this logic to hide a notification let me expose a hide method which takes the message and if it is in the tracking object i'll clear the timer remove the notification element then delete the tracking to test this hide message i'll set a one and a half second to hide the notification after i click it here now let's fix the issue if many notifications come in and we don't want to fill the screen with notification and what we can do is introduce a queue by the way i have several videos on queue data structure you need to check out but i'll do a simple version for this one and what we can do is add a max visible option which limits how many notifications to show at a time the logic behind a queue is that if notification comes in and we are already showing the max number of notification it goes to the queue and once one goes away it gets out of the queue and displayed and we have to make sure everything is showed in the order as they came in that's why the queue is very important because qq allows us to keep track of the order that things come in and inside the show method i'll again take advantage of the fact that all notification message will be in the same container and check if the children of the message count are equal to max visible and push through the queue with the arguments used to make the request for later let me reuse this hide method here and inside i'll check the queue size and for now i'll just log it so we can see it but first i'll make sure the message are different and create a variable to append and increment on every click seems not to work um, I forgot to say length here now I'll click repeatedly many times and when they go away we can see that we display three and then there are three in the queue still now here I'll just call show again with the first item in the queue by removing it and I'll spread it here because we that's how we set the arguments for it now let's test this and pay attention to the numbers and you will notice it is in order. This is appearing way too fast so I'll add some delay to start the queue message. There seems to be an issue here so I'll first recheck again before I'll call show again. Seems like half of a second delay works best. Now let's add an ability to close this notification manually. Inside the notification element create method, I'll query the close button and attach a click event to it, which will simply call the hide method. If we try this, it works great, but there is an issue. It leaves a gap and what I want is when I close, all the notification will shift up to adjust. To do that, I'll simply copy the shifting control we have here and I'll have to do the opposite, which is simple enough. For initial space, we don't need the space offset gap. And inside here, we will need to grab the current sibling top position, parse it to int, then subtract the space. So pretty much we look at the sibling current top position and shift up by the size of the one we removed. And it works perfectly so we pretty much took care of all complex features and for now on we will be handling the different positioning option which amazingly means so little adjustment to this mostly will be in CSS but also not much and the reason I love this is for the fact that it illustrates how the right HTML structure makes CSS and JavaScript easier and JavaScript fills up the things that would be complex for CSS alone. Amazing. With the position argument option in place, let's go to CSS to handle center top position. For the container, we will make it 50% from left, then shift it back negative 50% and I'll give it a padding for dimension and a real background and height so we can see it. Now for the message, instead of shifting it horizontally from left to right, I'll shift it vertically from top to bottom. I'll remove animation and set opacity to one so we can see it. Perfect. 
now i'll create a vertical animation where i'll translate it on the y-axis down to its position if i use this animation now we can see it fall down into place on the javascript side i'll get a hold of the top button and on the click i'll call show with the top as position to make it work inside the show method i'll append the position to the container class so our CSS makes effect let's try this now the issue is if I'm currently showing message in one location and trigger another in another location everything shifts so what I'll do is only apply the new position if there is no message showing Now for the position right, I'll set left of auto to overwrite our current position set and align it to the right zero. For the message, I'll translate it on the X axis, but make it positive. Then I'll create an animation from right from our left one and simply make it negative, pretty much inverting things from left. Now, when I apply the animation, we see it fall into place. Pretty straightforward, right? On JavaScript, I'll get a hold of the top right button and on click trigger the message on top right position. And the clothes still animate correctly without any changes so far. For the bottom left, we will overwrite the top position instead and set bottom zero. I'll set background and padding so you can see it. For the master, I'll simply set the top auto to override it and bottom to be the gap. Again, on JavaScript side, I'll get a hold of the bottom left button and on click trigger a message on bottom left position. It seems like the animation on stacking is now working on this is because when we are doing the shift, we are changing the top property on stack and we need to detect if position is somewhere on top or bottom and I'll check if the position starts with the bottom or not then use that when we set stop if we try this it works perfectly but it has no animation so I'll set the transition to bottom property as well here I'll also do the same for the close click as well Now when I click it, it simply works. Man, I love CSS and JavaScript. Now let's handle the remaining positioning. For bottom, I'll use the work we did on the top and bottom left as well, which simply centers it and align things to the bottom. They can share vertical animation, but I'll transform it differently. Let's continue by doing the bottom right as well and similarly I'll take advantage of the things we did for the top right and all bottom stuff which will simply work perfectly. Now on JavaScript side I'll get these buttons and add a click event to them with appropriate message and a position. Now when we try this, the animation works fine and the closing transition as well. Super, super cool. Another option we can add is class to attach to the post notification in order to style it in a different way. Before I wrap this, I'll expose a clear method that clear all message at once, which simply clears the queue and for each notification, it simply hides them. If I call clear two seconds after trigger a notification, we can see everything go away at once. Let me know what you think in the comments or like this video to support me. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on anything. Once again, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.